everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting yet another reading vlog for you guys and I am really excited about this one because today we're doing a little bit of a challenge. So a few months ago I did a reading 150 pages a day for a week challenge and I thought that was really fun and I wanted to do something kind of similar. So I've kind of been keeping that in mind but I've also seen some people doing some things with spinner wheels which I also kind of wanted to partake in so I saw this video very fleetingly. I wish I could find it back. If I can, I will link it down below. But somebody was doing a reading vlog where they let a spinner wheel choose their page count every day for a week. So same concept as the video that I did a couple months ago, but just a little bit different. We're putting a bit of a spin on it. <laughs> If you know what I mean. That is basically what this vlog is going to be for the next seven days. I'm going to let a spinner wheel choose my page count that I'm going to read every day. So I do have a spinner wheel on my phone that goes from 50 to 400 pages in increments of 50 pages. So I will spin that every day for the week and we'll just see what I end up having to read. I'm really excited. I haven't done a lot of reading in November so far, so I'm really excited to get into the TBR that I have for this video. So let me talk about the TBR. <laughs> which is, you know, a little ambitious. Here it is. Yikes. I'm not sure if this is too many books. I don't know if it's not enough. Basically to kind of estimate how many books I needed for this TBR, I took the average of 50 and 400 and then I multiplied it by seven. So like that's a very rough estimate. It's like 1600-ish pages. And like, that's kind of what this is. I don't know. We will just see as the vlog progresses if I need to um, pick some more. I don't know. I really hope not because that seems like excessive, but let me, let me just talk about these. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, I am in the middle of a book, which I'm really excited about finishing. And that is 10,000 Stitches by Olivia Atwater. This is the second book in the Regency fairy tale series. The first one being Half a Soul. We all know how I feel about Half a Soul. I love it so much. So I decided it was high time to finally pick this one up. And I am on page 135 so far and I'm loving it. It's so much fun. Like it's not as good as Half a Soul, but like I really was not expecting that because Half a Soul is just... But this one, it's like almost there. <laughs> Basically, this is following our main character, Effie, who is currently a maid and she kind of hates it. Like it's awful. It seems awful. I feel for her. <laughs> But there is this young man in the house who she falls in love with in like 0.3 seconds. And I was like, okay, maybe we need to calm down a bit, but go off, I guess. But seeing as this series is based off of like fairy tales, I'm gonna let that slide. So she has her sights set on this man. And then one day at a ball that the house that she works at was throwing, she meets this elf whose name is, what's his name? Like Jupiter Jubilee or something fun like that. And they end up striking a deal that he is going to help her get this man to fall in love with her and get married. And if that does not happen within like a hundred days, she is going to go be this elf's maid for the rest of her life. Also within that deal, there is this bit where she has to stitch 10,000 stitches into the coat that he's wearing. And basically this book is just following her as she tries to get this man to fall in love with her. And it's just, it's so fun. It's so whimsical. If there's anything that I need more of in my life, it is whimsy. And Olivia Atwater delivers. She just delivers. So I'm definitely going to be starting with this one and finishing it up. It's really short. It's only like 250 pages. So yeah, that's definitely happening. Then I also have a bit of a thick, chunky one that we are going to be reading look at it. And that is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I figured since I am very intimidated to continue the rest of the Farseer trilogy because they just keep getting longer. Like this book is like 650 pages and the one after this is like 800 and I'm scared honestly. But I figured maybe trying to read one of these for a reading challenge where I'm already reading a bunch, it won't seem so scary. It's just super long. But I really like the first book in the Farseer trilogy and I'm very excited to continue on with it. So definitely going to be getting to Royal Assassin. Then I'm also going to be picking up the Wyverns and Words book club pick for this month, which is God Killer by Hannah Kainer. This, um, I think it follows a god hunter of some sort, a god killer, if you will. It's really short. It's like just under 300 pages, I think. And I'm really excited to see what this author can do with this fantastical subject in such a small number of pages. So very excited about this one. Then I also want to finally, finally get to Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Obviously we all know Strange the Dreamer is one of my favorite books ever. And I've been meaning to read uh, this series for such a long time. I finally have some hardbacks of them. So it's time to finally jump in. I have no clue 
what this series is about, to be honest. I think um, our main character might have like blue hair or pink hair. She has some fun hair color. And I think there's portal magic in it. But aside from that, nothing. I don't know anything. But I feel like I also went into Strange the Dreamer not knowing anything about it and I just had the best time. So very excited to finally get a chance to jump into this. And then this is a book I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get to, we'll see, but I do maybe want to start Circe by Madeline Miller. The thing with this one is that I don't want to like rush through it because this seems like the kind of book that I'm gonna wanna take my time with. So I've decided that I'm going to save this until like the end of the video. And like, if I get to it, that's cool. If I don't, okay, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but yeah this is the uh the stack of books that i'm hoping to read this week oh this looks ridiculous but i am definitely in the reading mood also before we get into more of this vlog i do have some book mail that i thought we could open which i'm very excited about one of these actually i might have already opened but i wanted to show you guys because i'm really excited about it but i got this lumicrate package i had my eye on this book for a while i was just like i don't know if I want to read this book or not. But then I saw Cass reading the Shades of Magic series and it just reminded me how much I enjoyed that series. And I was like, you know what? I will probably end up reading this book. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. And I did put it back in the package for, you know, a little fun unboxing moments. But if you have not figured out what it is already, I got The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. I just love this red hardcover. I'm a big fan of it and the sprayed edges I think are super cool. Um, you have like this little hand at the top, which is really fun. And then under the dust jacket, we have this. Oh my God, her name is huge. That's crazy. I decided to go ahead and pick it up. And I mean, it is signed, I believe, by V.E. Schwab, yes. And V.E. Schwab, it's been a minute since I have read any of her work, but she, for a really long time, was one of my favorite authors, like, ever. And I kind of want to do a reread of the Shades of Magic series and then read this, so... I'm so excited about that. And I'm so excited about this book. And then this one I have not opened. This is just a Blackwell's package. I bought, I was gonna say I bought some books. Um, obviously. Anyway, they tape right over the pull tabs. So what can I use to open this with? Ta-da. I mean, that didn't really do much of anything. First of all, these are just two books from the same series, but it's a series that I'm really excited about continuing. So first of all, oh man, I just ripped it a bit. Oopsie. <laughs> um, so first of all, we have Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book of Skyward. Skyward series? Is it the Skyward series? I think so. But I love the covers for these. I really enjoy the gold like foiling on them. These are honestly just so much better than the US hardbacks. We also have Cytonic. I decided to go ahead and buy both of these. So I'm just so excited to finally have these. And I will be picking this series back up in the new year because I really enjoyed Skyward. It was a really fun time. So there we go. That is... Whew, that's the book mail, the TBR. Now we can get to the fun part of spinning the wheel. <laughs> now I'm not gonna be starting this challenge today because I do have an exam that I have to go take later today and that's like very much on my mind and need to focus on it. So I'm gonna start this challenge tomorrow, but I'm gonna go ahead and spin today for my page count tomorrow just to kind of make it easier. Honestly, I'm a little scared. Like honest, I'm hoping for something low. Okay. Okay, 250 is not that bad. It could be worse, I guess. I was hoping for something lower, but um, 250, yeah. So tomorrow is when I'm gonna start. I'm going to finish up 10,000 stitches and then I'm thinking I want to, uh, oops, <laughs> then pick up Daughter of Smoke and Bone. So I will catch up with you guys tomorrow when I start reading 10,000 stitches. Thank you. 
little bit later and I have very exciting news because I just finished 10,000 stitches and it was so fun. Obviously, it's not nearly as good as Half a Soul. I'm just gonna put that out there right now. <laughs> Although Half a Soul has quickly just become one of my absolute favorite books of the year of all time. I recommend it to so many people. So if this book was even anywhere nearly as good as Half a Soul, I was about to be astounded. It wasn't, I think it's pretty different, but that is not to say that I didn't still really enjoy this one because it was so cute. First of all, I love the writing. I feel like it does the perfect job of setting the ambiance and the whimsical vibe that this book has without being too much. I also really enjoyed the characters that we were following because our main character Effie is a Regency housemaid and we're kind of seeing a lot of what what that life was like and kind of the trials and tribulations that go along with it. And also through following her and her friends who are also servants, like in this same house, you kind of got to see what the general mistreatment of servants was like. Obviously, um, it's awful, it sucks, but this book I feel like does a good job at kind of touching on that in a way that like makes sense for the story. And I thought that was really well done. Also, I did really like the romance. I thought it was really cute, but something I really liked about this one is that I feel like I had no clue where the ro- okay, well, I wouldn't say I had no clue, but I feel like there were definitely some options where the romance could go. And for a while, I just wasn't sure where it was gonna go because I was thinking like, you know, they're both they're both decent options. However, due to some things that we found out at the end of the book, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, there really is only one option. But it kept me guessing. I just wasn't really sure. I feel like with a lot of books that I read, it's very clear to see where the romance is gonna go unless you have like a love triangle situation, but I don't read a lot of books with love triangles in them, aside from my beloved, The Infernal Devices. But for the most part, I don't really like love triangles. So like, every other book that I read, I'm like, okay, well, obviously this person could end up with this person. But this one, it was kind of fun because I didn't know. I also really liked the plot. This book and I believe Half a Soul are both around like the 250-ish page mark. And I feel like that's a really good length for more like fairy tale esque stories because it keeps the pace brisk, but it doesn't like go on for too long. You know what I'm saying? So I just, it was so much fun. I had such a good time. <laughs> also, also something we need to talk about, which does pertain to this because I'm so excited about this. I was looking at Olivia Atwater's Instagram a couple of days ago just because I was curious if she had a new book coming out at any point in time soon. I wasn't sure, I wasn't keeping up with it, but the, the piece of information that I have found out is uh, like, it feels like this book is tailor made for me because she literally has a book coming out next week. I had literally no clue. When I saw the release date on it, I squealed a little bit, but it is book number one of the Victorian fairy tales series. Like, you're joking. <laughs> because this series that this is a part of is called the Regency fairy tale series. So obviously these are all like fairy tale esque stories that take place in the Regency period. And like, that's great. I love it. But the Regency period isn't like my number one favorite like historical time period to read about. But do you know what is? Yeah, that's right. The Victorian period. I am so excited. It's called The Witch Would Not. I have no clue what it's about, but it's kind of like a more dark fairy tale, which sounds really good. I have yet to read the description of this. I don't really know if I will, to be honest, but um, kind of getting back to talking about this, I will definitely be picking up the next one in this series because I think there are only three in the series and the last one that I have to read is Long Shadow. So I figured I liked this one. So obviously I got to pick up the next one. I don't know when I'm going to do that just sometime soon, but I'm so glad that I finally got around to reading this and it was a really good time. So if you guys haven't checked out this series, highly recommend. So I read 111 pages so far today. So there's that. Obviously, um, I still have like 139 pages to go. So it is time to pick up my next read, which I am also so excited about this one because I'm finally going to be picking up Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I've been talking about how I want to read this series for like months now, and it is finally time that I actually get myself to do it. So I have no clue what this series is about, but that is what we are going to find out <laughs> in this video. <laughs> And I also think I'm gonna go outside for a little bit because the weather today is beautiful. We have this really vibrant tree in our backyard at the moment because she's a late turner, but she is gorgeous. So I figured we could soak up these last few days of, you know, temperate weather and I'm gonna go read outside. So I'm going to read my 139 pages, probably not all outside, but a little bit outside. And I'll probably talk to you guys tomorrow.
is now Saturday morning and I do have an exciting update because I did reach my 250 pages for yesterday. So, woo. Day one out of seven done. But it was very fortuitous because like part two of this book or what I'm assuming is being considered part two of this book literally started on page 139. And I was like, that is exactly what I had to read to. So I just stopped there and it was perfect. But this book is it's very interesting so far because it is simultaneously, I feel, very different from other YA fantasy series I've read. Like it's got kind of this strange, gritty vibe, which I was liking. <laughs> and then as the book progressed, I, I kind of started to realize that it was also very much like exactly like all of the other why a fantasy series that I've read and I'll, I'll explain that <laughs> in a second but basically this book opens up on us learning about our main character Karu who is currently a 17 year old art student living in Prague. We learn that obviously she loves art, she sketches a lot in her sketchbook and she shows all of her sketches to her friend and they're like some weird looking sketches of some interesting looking creatures shall we say. But as the book progresses, we kind of start to learn a little bit more about the the other aspects of Karu's life. And we see her get summoned to this dude named Brimstone. And it turns out all of the weird creature things that she draws in her notebook are actually real. And they all live at this shop where she was raised by these chimera, I think is what they're called. And it turns out that Brimstone and these other chimera, they collect teeth and they kind of have this underground black market thing for teeth essentially <laughs> because obviously the act of obtaining teeth is usually pretty gory unless you want to go do some grave robbing which in and of itself is also just like <laughs> very morbid so that's kind of where the the dark gritty aspects of the story come from and we see the brimstone is basically just in the market of buying teeth from people and he has our main character karu go on errands for him in like the, the normal human world because this shop actually exists like in this elsewhere place is what they call it. And every time the door to this shop opens, it can basically open into any city in the world that it wants to, which is kind of where, you know, the portal magic aspect of this comes from. So in the very beginning of this book, we see Karu get summoned for her errand and she ends up having to go to Paris to like steal these, I think they said 17 foot long elephant tusks. And we're following her as she walks through the streets of Paris with these 17 foot elephant tusks. And I was like, I just wanna know the physics of this. Like I honestly, I don't know how heavy elephant tusks are, but that seems ridiculous, honestly. But I digress, it doesn't really matter, but I was just confused. But basically she just goes out and she obtains all of these teeth for Brimstone. We don't know what he does with them. We don't know what business he's really in. All Karu really knows is that her job is to go collect things for him. I had no clue about any of that going into this book. So it was, it was kind of fun just you know going along with it and figuring out what the hell's going on. But this book is like, kind of told in two points of view. For the majority of the book, we are following Karu and like everything that she's doing. But every now and then we get these really short chapters from this dude named Akiva, who is, guys, he's an angel. And I just like, <laughs> of course he is. Why wouldn't he be, you know? I feel like this book I think came out in like 2011. I looked last night, which makes so much sense. Like just after the, the impact shall we say, that these Shadowhunter books had on the genre, just like paranormal, YA, whatever genre. It makes sense. But honestly, I just wasn't, I, I really wasn't ready for it. But I'm kind of ready to have like a classic YA fantasy fun kind of time, you know? So I'm really excited to read some more of this and let's go ahead and spin the wheel for today to figure out exactly how much more of this I'm going to be reading today. I think I'd really be okay with any number of pages. So let's just see what we get. Nothing crazy. 200 pages. Okay, cool. That will put me at what? Like page 339? That'll be pretty close to finishing this book, to be honest. Well, I mean, it'll be like 90 pages off, but I might just try and finish this book today, to be honest. We'll kind of just see what I'm feeling, but it's a really fast read. So I'm going to get into reading some more of this. Oh, also, oh my God, <laughs> the leaves, my little reading outside session yesterday was so lovely. The temperature was perfect. I had such a good time. I just want to let you guys know, 
Highly recommend if you still have some nice leaves on the ground, go on to read outside in them. Anyway, I'm gonna get into reading probably the rest of this book and I will catch up with you guys a little bit later. Sunday morning and obviously I have an update for you guys on Daughter of Smoke and Bone because I finished this book yesterday. Honestly, I don't really know how I feel about this book to be honest because there are a lot of things I liked. There were some things that I didn't like and I just don't know. I would say the last like 150 to 200 pages of this book is very different from the beginning of the book and like all of the things that I was liking about it because we're kind of shifting who we're following as the main character. And I really enjoyed following Karu as the main character, but then like the whole last 150 pages of this book, we're kind of getting the history and backstory of some, some things. Like I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't want to give anything away, but it just, it's very different. And also the kind of twist in this book, I don't know how I feel about it because it's a trope that I really dislike. I just hate it when books use this specific trope in them. But also this book was written like 13 years ago, so maybe. It was a new concept back then. What do I know? But I just don't love it. I do feel like it makes a lot of certain things make a lot more sense, but I don't love the twist. However, the more like fantasy aspects of this are interesting because it mainly centers around this conflict between the angels and the chimera. And due to who we are following, we do get to see like both sides of the story, which I do like, but I just don't know if I really am that invested in it, which pains me to be honest because I really wanted to love this series and I do think I'm going to continue on with it. I mean I do have the other two books. I am interested enough to continue it. I just I just don't know. However there are definitely some things that I did like. I know I was talking yesterday about the whole like angels being introduced and kind of going down this typical YA fantasy route. However, I feel like Lainey Taylor she's definitely like done her own thing with it which I did enjoy kind of seeing that. I liked the writing. I feel like you can definitely tell that this is Lainey Taylor's first book because the writing vastly different from what you find in Strange the Dreamer, but I feel like it's still really nice. I really like it. I also really like the side characters because Karu does have this friend whose name is Zuzana and I really liked what she added to the story as well. I feel like she was just, you know, fun, kind of lightening the mood. I really enjoyed their friendship dynamic as well. And I'm excited to see who else we are going to be like focusing on throughout the rest of the story because I feel like there are a lot of like peripheral characters that could potentially like be drawn into being more of like a main side character. So there are definitely like a bunch of other characters that I would enjoy following. Honestly, this is why I'm glad I stopped writing books because I have no clue what I would give this book because I liked it. I enjoyed my time reading it. It was a really fast read. I feel like it's really easy to fall into. And I do think now that it is rather different from other YA fantasy series that I have picked up that were published like you know, 10 plus years ago, but I just wasn't completely sold on all aspects of this book. However, I am very intrigued to see where the other books are gonna go. So there is Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but this is good that I actually read this because this was a part of my 2023 TBR. So I can tick another book off of there, which is always good. Now it is time for us to do a little spin to see how many pages I have to read today. Really hoping for something low today. I mean, like 200 pages yesterday wasn't bad, but I just want something under 150. Maybe like 150 or under. Oh god, I thought it was gonna land. I thought it was gonna land on 400. 50 pages. This is great. This is exactly what I needed. Thank you, spinner wheel gods. Because honestly, I don't really have it in me to do much like vlogging today, so I'm probably just going to read 50 pages of what? 
I'll probably pick up God Killer just because I have to read this book by next Saturday. So I'm gonna read 50 pages of this, maybe more if I'm really feeling it, but probably only 50 pages. So I'm gonna go get into that and I will talk to you guys probably tomorrow. Monday morning and I do have a brief update for you guys on God Killer because I only made it up to page 44 yesterday. Now I know my page count yesterday was 50 but do not fret I did still hit the 50 pages because I realized I do have an entire book that I need to read for a Patreon like exclusive video that I'm doing. I'm doing a blind date with a book or else I would like tell you what the book was but to not spoil it for like people who are gonna watch that video just know that I started a book. I think I made it to page like where did I make it to? 37. So I actually ended up reading around 80 pages yesterday, but only 44 of those were out of God Killer because honestly, I'm not loving this book so far. Basically, to kind of actually give you guys an idea as to what this book is about now that I finally kind of know, this opens up like the very first chapter. We are following our main character, Kissin, who is essentially just watching her entire family get murdered by a fire god, I think. So then when we start chapter one, which takes place in the current day, we see that she has become a god killer, which is somebody that hunts down and kills gods, as you might assume. Obviously in order to kind of get some vengeance for the deaths of like her whole family. So we're kind of following her story. We haven't really seen a whole lot out of her yet because this book is told in a couple of different points of view. And we've really only gotten one from her POV, but the other points of view, I'm kind of interested in because we have this young noble girl whose name is what? Inara. And we see that she has this like minor god whose soul is like bound to hers. And I think it might be through this bond. She might just already have it. I don't remember, but she has this kind of magic where she sees colors coming off of people. She can like ascertain certain things about them like from these colors, which I think is kind of fun. So I am excited to see some more about that, but Inara's kind of main problem is that she wants this god to be untethered from her soul. So Inara has sought out Kissin to get some help with removing the god from her soul, but we haven't really gotten to that part yet. A lot of this I've just read off of the back, but we have seen like their initial meeting and I think they're like gonna get into talking about it. But we've also gotten a point of view from the like minor god that is attached to her soul. His name is Skeddy, I think. Honestly, I'm kind of liking Skeddy. I don't know if it's like, if he's malevolent or something, but he doesn't really seem malevolent yet. So I'm interested to see kind of what that's gonna be about. We've also gotten our kind of last main POV, I think, who is like a knight or something who's hiding in a village. 
I think, I don't know, my main problem so far with this book is that we've been thrown a lot of different points of view. We haven't really been given a ton of world building to like place what exactly is going on. And it's just been a lot of like information that I'm trying to figure out but I feel like it's not a lot of information that's been given so far. However, we aren't like super far into the book. We're only 44 pages in, but it's pretty short. I am, I'm interested to see where it's gonna go. The thing is, I'm just like, I'm not that invested in it yet. I don't know if I truly care about any of these people, but time will only tell. This is apparently the first book in a trilogy. I did not know that. I know the second book is coming out sometime soon, but those are kind of my current thoughts on it. I'm not sold yet, but I could get there. But anyway, it is time to spin for my page count for the day. So let's see what I'm gonna have to be reading today. All right, we have hit 250 again. Is that not what I got on the first day? All right, well, 250 will literally take me to exactly the end of this book because it's a 300 page book and I'm on page 44. Is that exactly 250 pages? No, okay, it's not exactly 250 pages. I'm gonna have to find like five pages of something else to read, but um, I guess we are finishing this book today. But honestly, that's fine with me. I'm kind of down to binge the rest of this book and just see what I think. Oh, also, um, before this clip, as you will see, I did do a little bit of journaling because I wanted to kind of break up all of the reading that I've been doing so far in this vlog with a little something different. So I decided to do my little winter TBR page and I think it's really cute. It is the exact same theme that I used for my December setup, but I had some more of these stickers left over. So I wanted to make my little winter TBR match and I love the colors on it. I think it's fun. I had a good time. Anyway, it is time to read. Let's get into reading all of God Killer. morning and great news. I did finish God Killer yesterday. I feel like I've been finishing so many books in this vlog. We are only on day five, so three books down. Very excited about that. However, I don't know if I'm that excited <laughs> that I finished this book. I feel like I've had two books in this vlog now that have been very average and that pains me to be honest because I just didn't love this book. I don't think it's really doing anything new. I didn't really care about the general plot. I mean, I liked the characters and I think there is like a very interesting character dynamic going on because you have Inara who is like a young noble and then you have Kissin who is the god killer and Kissin kind of sees a little bit of herself in Inara because Inara has recently been orphaned essentially and like the kind of older sister type bond that she forms with Inara is really nice. And I thought the bond that she formed with Inara over the course of the book was very humanizing and it definitely made me like Kissin as a character more. So like that was good. I liked that. And then you also have this like knight who is posing as a baker that kind of ends up going on this quest with them. And I liked him and his backstory. And I liked the general group dynamic for the most part, <laughs> because there was also a romance thrown into this book. It's very like romance light. It's kind of just like a little something going on. And I never thought I would say this, but I don't need a romance in this book. Like it is the last thing I really expected to happen. <laughs> So when they just started like having sex, I was like, what's going on? Now is not the time for this, but I digress. Also, Skeddy is a little part of their group and Skeddy was an interesting character. I definitely had like a lot of, you know, conflicting opinions about him as the story progressed, but I also really did like 
what he added into the story because for the most part throughout the book the gods are like this you know far off presence that we really don't see a lot of but like Skeddy being so involved within the group kind of gave you a different perspective of gods and what they're like and I enjoyed the um the drama, shall we say, that he like threw into the group. However, I didn't love the like fantasy elements of this book because the only really fantasy elements that there are are like the powers that Inara somehow has through Skeddy, which like we saw a little bit of and it was kind of cool, but it wasn't super prevalent. And then you also have like the gods, which as I mentioned are kind of just like far off beings but like for the most part it's kind of just like a book with a medieval setting so I just kind of wish there had been more fantasy elements in it like the ending was fine it wasn't like amazing I just feel very apathetic towards this book I don't really care about it nor am I gonna continue on with the series which is sad because I was really hoping to like this but it just didn't wow me it's not like a bad book necessarily I think there are definitely a lot of people who would enjoy this but it just it wasn't enough fantasy for me and I didn't love the plot so there are kind of my thoughts on God Killer. I'm so sad that this is the second book in a row that I just like don't really have a lot of personal feelings towards but it's done so that's good because I do have to have this finished by Saturday because it is the book club pick for this month so it was a productive day yesterday I just don't know I just, I just don't know you know so there is this book done I ended up reading 244 pages of this book to finish it and then yesterday I did briefly start Royal Assassin I got like 10 pages into it and I was like you know what <laughs> I don't think this is the book for right now because I've had two books that are like very average and I just want something really fun and I know Royal Assassin is going to be good I just don't know if it's going to be like a fun time so I'm making a slight change to the TBR I haven't mentioned this book yet but it's my Patreon buddy read so I do need to read it but I'm also really excited about it because I have seen quite a few people talking about it and I'm like I want to read this book because a lot of people are saying it's really fun and that is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This is a fantasy romance type of situation and I'm always down for a good fantasy romance. So I think I'm going to read a bunch of this today. This book is pretty long though. It's like over 500 pages I think. So it's 497 pages. That is a very long book. I'm not 100% sure really as to what this book is about just that a lot of people are reading it and I've been very intrigued buy it. So let me do a little spinner wheel for the day. See how many pages I'm gonna read. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what number I get. I'm hoping for something large because I do want to read a very large chunk of this book today. So let us spin and see what we get. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I did ask for something large, I guess. So uh, 400. We are reading 400 pages of this book today. I might as well just read the whole damn thing today. I mean, no, I'm not committing to that. That would be a bad idea to commit to that, but I am going to be reading a rather large chunk of this book today. So yeah, um, I guess let's just get into it. I have a lot of pages to read, no more time to chatter. Chatter, I, whatever, <laughs> let's go. should have given you guys an update on Powerless a little bit earlier but I'm over halfway through now and I I'm not gonna have an issue at all with reading 400 pages of this book today because I 
love it, honestly. I am on page 260 now. I'm just having such a good time, honestly. Like this book, it's not anything new. It's not groundbreaking. It feels like a lot of different YA series kind of put together, but I'm kind of living for it, to be honest. And now that we've gotten further into the book, there is definitely like a rather heavy emphasis put upon the romance because I do believe this is kind of marketed as like fantasy romance, romantasy, romance, fantasy. I don't exactly know which of those categories this one falls under, but also I do really enjoy the plot as well. And I just, I'm so excited to report that because God Killer and Daughter Smoke and Bone, like they were fine, but they weren't very fun. But this book, it has been fun. So to kind of uh, give you guys like the setup for what is going down in this book, this takes place in a kingdom that at one point in time had a plague on it that somehow granted powers to part of the population. And I've really enjoyed learning about like the types of powers that have been granted to people because you have somebody that can like duplicate themselves. You have somebody that can cast illusions. One of our main characters can like sense if somebody has a power and like then in turn use that himself. And they're just like a bunch of different types of powers that you can possibly have. And a lot of them are really sick. So that's been fun. But a portion of the population was given these powers. However, the people in the population that were not given these powers, they were banished from the kingdom, which is obviously really stupid. And one of our main characters is Prince Kai. He is second in line for the throne. So instead of training to become a king like his older brother Kit has been doing his whole life, he has been training to become the Enforcer, which is basically somebody who goes and tracks down all of the non-magical people who are called Ordinaries and execute them, basically. And you can kind of see that he's, you know, he's having a lot of trouble with this position that he has been given in life. He thinks it is his princely duty, but like you can kind of tell that like, Obviously that's awful. Obviously he doesn't want to do that. And very early in the book, you can kind of see the small ways in which he is trying to push back against it. He's not trying like that hard to be honest because it would be like treason if he did. But he was given this mission to go track down this like little 12 year old girl or something who is an ordinary living in the city and like execute her. But he ended up just like smuggling her out of the city. So obviously like, like a, a shred of mercy, you know? But I feel like throughout the series, you're probably gonna see him like continue to push back against that role some more because obviously that's terrible. But that is just one of our main characters. The other main character that we are following is Peyton. And at the beginning of this book, she is living in the slums. She lives on the streets. She pickpockets to get her money with her friend. I don't remember what her friend's name is. It starts with an A, but like, it's just kind of the two of them against the world. Until one day, she ends up running into Prince Kai. And at first she pickpockets him because obviously you see a prince walking down the street. He's got the little bag of coins hanging off this belt. He's asking to be pickpocketed at that point. But then later in the day, after she successfully pickpockets him, she ends up kind of saving his life. And this draws a lot of attention from the people in the slums that like witnessed this happening. And she has been dubbed the silver savior because she has silver over hair because would it be a YA book if our main character did not have fun colored hair? No, it would not. But keep that information to the side for a moment because also in this kingdom, there is this like set of trials that's about to happen called the plaguing trials, I believe. But the contestants in this trial get nominated by the people that like live in their area. So obviously her saving the prince like a couple days ago, has brought a lot of attention to her. So all of the people in the slums like voted for her to be in these trials. And honestly, I don't know if I'd consider that an honor because people are like dying in these trials. But that kind of leads us into the main chunk of this book, which is these plaguing trials because Peyton is a part of these. Obviously Kai is a part of these. And I've just gotten to the point of the book where we are finally like getting into the trials. There was a lot of like setup, but it wasn't slow setup necessarily. It was kind of like just leading us into how Peyton got selected for the trials and like the preparations that were going on and like they were doing interviews with all the contestants. It was very Hunger Games-esque, honestly. And I'm kind of okay with that because I feel like a lot of books that are pitched as like 
the Hunger Games meets insert fantasy series here. It's never actually like the Hunger Games. Like the Serpent in the Wings of Night, that book, it was also pitched to me as like Hunger Games meets whatever. Absolutely nothing like the Hunger Games. There was just a trial aspect to it, but it was not in any way similar. But I feel like using the Hunger Games would be like a somewhat accurate description for this one, especially in like the showmanship and the flamboyancy that goes along with how they are introducing these contestants to the public. I am just so excited to see where the rest of this book is going to go. Currently, we are kind of in the middle of the first trial. And obviously, because there's like a little bit of a romance aspect in this, our main character is going to team up. I'm all for them teaming up. I'm all for somebody getting hurt and like somebody being concerned about it. Like I eat that up and I need more of that. And I feel like this book is going to give me that. And I've just been having a really good time. Like there are obviously some awful things happening in this world, but I feel like because this book is at least now primarily focused on the romance, I'm just having such a good time with like that. And I'm really excited to see some more of the trials that I cannot wait to read some more. So, whew, I just spent 11 minutes talking about this book. I'm just excited about it. I'm gonna go read some more of this and I will give you guys an update on it maybe later tonight or tomorrow. I guess we'll see. But I'm so, I'm just so excited that I have like an exciting update for you. So I will see you guys later. Okay, we have a nice little background for this update because I just got done filming a video. So we get to, my chair is here right now. Not that that really matters. I just thought I would address it. But it's currently Wednesday morning and I read the entirety of Powerless yesterday, all 500 pages of it, and I have no qualms about the fact that I did so because I loved it, to be honest. I had no clue that I was going to enjoy this book that much. I had just seen people talking about it, got chosen as the buddy read for the month, and I was like, all right, cool. But <laughs> I couldn't be stopped. I literally could not be stopped. I had to know what was going to happen next, like at all times. I feel like the pacing was really well done. Obviously, I was obsessed with the romance, love them so much, honestly. There are definitely a lot of things that you could say about this book because this is a debut novel. It is not perfect. I think there's a lot of repetitiveness in the writing. I still don't completely understand what the point of the trials was, aside from like bringing our main character to this castle to be in like close proximity with the princes. But honestly, I have no desire to think critically about this book because it was it was just really good. I just had a really fun time reading this book. If you guys enjoy fantasy romance, honestly would highly recommend you pick up Powerless. It is a YA fantasy romance and honestly like that did not hinder my enjoyment of it in the slightest. It kind of felt like old school YA kind of books in a way and I was kind of, I was, I was here for that concept. But it also, I feel like it pulls a lot from other books in a very obvious way. So if that would like bother you, don't pick this up. But I think it was just, it was just fun. I think it knows that it is heavily pulling from these other series, but it does it in just, I just, I just really liked it, okay? I have no other critical thoughts to say about it aside from the fact that I, it was compulsively readable. There is my obligatory little like one-liner that you see on the front of books and it's true. It was compulsively readable <laughs> because the plot was very fast-paced. The romance was, ooh, I was eating up the romance just, oh, Kai, he, he was something else. Just like the things he was saying, oh, he was so obsessed with her and I was so obsessed with that concept and I need the second book right now <laughs> because the ending of this book was not cool. I don't like it. I think it's very easy to kind of predict what the ending of this book is going to be like, but I still didn't like it. Honestly, yesterday kind of feels like a fever dream because it always kind of feels like a fever dream when I read a book this long in one day, but like a fun fever dream, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, with that being said, we do need to spin for my page count for the day. And as one would be, I'm a little burnt out on reading now. Like I really need a break. <laughs> but I have two days of this challenge left and there is no way I'm going to give up at the end. So we're hoping for something low. If it's not low, I will riot, but let us spin. Okay, okay. I can do a hundred pages. I can certainly do a hundred pages. But the book that I am planning on picking up today Again, I am deviating from the TBR. There is no way in hell I want to pick up Royal Assassin right now. And I also really don't want to pick up Cersei right now. I need something fun and fast. And like, I know that's kind of what Powerless was, but 
I just need something else fun and fast. So I recently picked up Love on the Brain from the library and I'm like, of uh, contemporary romance honestly sounds like the perfect change of pace. I have no clue how I'm gonna feel about this book because I know I've really liked Allie Hazelwood's other books. Like Love Theoretically is one of my favorite books of the year. It was so good. I just don't know how I'm gonna feel about this one. I have no clue, but I've been meaning to read this one for a while because it's the only like adult novel that she's written that I haven't picked up yet, but it is time. I think it is time and I'm going to spend some time today reading Love on the Brain. So I'm gonna get into it. I will update you guys at some point in time. To be honest, I don't really know if I want to do much vlogging today just because I, f I did a lot of vlogging yesterday. <laughs> So I might need a wee bit of a break, but I will read the 100 pages and you're just gonna have to <laughs> trust me on that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into it and I'll talk to you guys at some point in time. So it is Thursday morning, meaning it is the last day of the challenge. And honestly, I am ready for the challenge to be over. <laughs> Like I've definitely read a bunch and I've read way more than I needed to for this challenge But I'm also ready for a little day off from reading, you know But I did end up meeting my page count for yesterday because I read up to page 262 of love on the brain So I don't remember what my page count exactly was supposed to be for yesterday But I know I went over it by quite a bit So you could probably assume that I am liking this book and I am. It is literally the exact same as every other one of Ali Hazelwood's books, but honestly, the copy and paste, like, I respect the hustle. Like, good for her, I guess. But I would like something a little bit different, but that's not to say that I'm not enjoying this one because they work. I feel like they do work. However, it is just a ton of miscommunication, which does get on my nerves, and a ton of the love interest being described as big or large. He's 6'4", like he's built, and she will not let you forget that fact. At one point, B, who is our main character, literally describes Levi, who is like the love interest, as being built like a Victorian mansion. And I was like, what does that mean? I don't get it. I burst out laughing because it was just so ridiculous. I, I digress, like, I don't even care to be honest. Obviously there are a lot of issues with like Ali Hazelwood books and I see why so many people dislike them, but they just work for me. I think they're fun. They're definitely a little bit cringe, but I do enjoy the romances a lot. But with this one, we are following our main character B who currently works for the NIH, but she gets to go work on this project at NASA. They're doing like a little NIH NASA collab situation to make I think helmets for astronauts, which like, that's really sick. And she ends up being a lead on this project, but she's actually a co-lead technically because her other lead is her other main character, Levi. And they actually went to grad school together back in the day. There's like a whole bit of lore situation going on with that, but she thinks that he hates her basically. And based on the way he acts, I would probably think that too, to be fair. But they kind of like work through that, but she keeps calling him her nemesis. And she keeps stating the fact that they are like, they hate each other. And I'm like, girl, we are 300 pages almost into this romance book. You have literally like, you've had civil conversations. You are working together very well on this project. Stop saying that you hate each other. Like it's getting on my nerves because she's just like, oh, I hate him so much, but he's so hot. I'm like, no, you don't hate him and he doesn't hate you. Like, it's just a lot of assuming and it gets on my nerves. But despite all of that, I can't stop reading. <laughs> like, I just need more. The way that Allie Hazelwood writes her love interests, I just, it always works for me. I just always love them so much. And this is like no exception. Honestly, this book is nowhere near as good as Love Theoretically. Like, I don't know what she put in Love Theoretically, but it is so much better than all of her other books, but this one is still like, it's fine. I like B as a main character. She's a little bit cringe sometimes, but I think all of Allie Hazelwood's main characters are like a little bit cringe, but kind of in an endearing way almost. So kind of just let it slide. And I'm just excited to finish this up. I would assume that we are going to get into the third act conflict pretty soon, which I am not excited for because I feel like it's just gonna be more miscommunication and I like give me something better give me a better third act conflict than miscommunication because I feel like that is a hole that a lot of romance books fall in but yes those are kind of my thoughts on love on the brain also this is like a library copy and this is so floppy I feel like it's been read by so many people it's just like 
beautiful. But I am very much enjoying this. I feel like Allie Hazelwood has the perfect type of books to just binge, and that's basically what I've been doing. So yeah, there's this. I have like 90 pages left, I believe. So let's do our little last spin for the vlog. I'm hoping for something low, but I feel like I'm gonna have to find something else to read. Okay, 100 pages. I can work with that. So I will have to read like literally 10 more pages than what are in this book. So I will probably pick up this little novella that I picked up from the library the other day. And that is Thornhedge by T. Kingfisher. I figure this could be like a good thing to kind of throw on at the end. So I'm not starting like a super long book, but something I could potentially like, you know, finish tomorrow or something if I'm really feeling it. But I will start it in this vlog to fully meet my page count. So I'm gonna go finish up Love on the Brain and I will give you guys an update about it later. hanging out here it would be fun to do a little update for you guys from this chair because I did finish love on the brain and I really liked it like I really did but what what was going on at the end of this book I feel like obviously romance books like don't have stakes at all like for the most part because it is a romance book but why did the end of this book feel like a bad action movie like, what was going on? It was something. However, overall, I did really like the romance. I thought the epilogue was really cute. And I just had a really good time reading Love on the Brain. I'm feeling chatty, so I figured now that I've read all of Allie Hazelwood's, like, adult romance novels, I could give you my power ranking, okay? Starting at the worst. Little Love Hypothesis, easily the worst one. It's also been, like, two years since I read it, so I don't remember a ton about it, but, like, bottom. Then it goes below zero, I think is what it's called. It's one of her like novellas. Then Love on the Brain, because like it wasn't amazing, but it was better than those two for sure. And then we get into the three that like I actually really like. So I think Stuck with You, which is where they get like stuck in an elevator. That's next. Then we have Under One Roof, I think is the pink one from the novellas. And then Love Theoretically. My love. I love that book so much. Honestly, like, I think about it all the time. Like, when I first read it, I was like, this is really good. I love it. But, like, I've continued to think about it. So, if you guys have ever wanted to know the Allie Hazelwood Power Rankings, there you go. Yeah, I'm just getting off on some tangent. Don't bite the book. Getting off on some tangents. This one was fun. I'm really glad I decided to pick it up. I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to, to be honest, because I thought it was going to be more along the lines of, like, the love hypothesis, but I feel like this was a lot better than the love hypothesis, so really happy about this and like a really fast read. So there is that. I have read, I think, 88 pages today so far. So I have 12 pages left to go. I think I'm still going to be picking up Thornhedge, kind of reading a little bit of that. And I'll give you guys like some initial thoughts and whatnot on it, but I really don't want to finish it in this vlog because I've already finished five books in this vlog. And frankly, I just need a little, little reading break, you know? Oh, wait, where are you going? Oh, no, you can't go that way. If you want to leave you gotta go that way. So I'm gonna go read these 12 pages. Tomorrow morning I'm probably gonna do a little bit of updating in my reading journal because it has been a moment since I've done that and then we will wrap up the vlog but I just don't feel like wrapping up the vlog tonight. So I'll talk to you guys sometime tomorrow. <laughs>
officially the end of the challenge meeting. I am here to end the vlog, end the video, give you a little recap over what I've read this week, and talk about a new book that I started that I'm really excited about. Honestly, it is going to be quite a while before I commit to filming a video where I have to read and vlog every day for seven days. Now, don't get me wrong, I definitely had such a fun time filming this vlog. I hadn't had a ton of time in November to really do much reading, and I'm really not gonna have a ton of time the next couple weeks, especially with like final projects and all of that. So to kind of just dedicate a week to reading essentially as much as I can. It was really fun. But now that it's over, I'm definitely appreciating some casual reading. So let me get into talking about all five of the books that I finished in this vlog. But first, I do want to talk about the book that I'm currently in the middle of that I started to kind of fulfill those last 10 pages that I needed. Now, I know I said I was going to read Thorn... Thorn Hedge? Is that what it's called? The novella by T. King Fisher? Did not do that because I was watching one of Carrie Can Read's most recent videos where she was talking about this series that she recently read on Kindle Unlimited. And I'd actually seen this series a few months prior on somebody's Instagram. The cover art for it like really caught my eye. So I'd been like thinking like, maybe I should read this. It also like sounded really good, obviously. But hearing about it again really cemented the fact that like I need to read this series. So I signed up for Kindle Unlimited again. I figured I needed it anyway in December because there are a couple of releases that are gonna be on KU that I want to like be able to read them immediately. Like Gold by Raven Kennedy and Ruthless Vows, I believe are both gonna be on KU. So needed it anyway. And I'm like, why don't I start this series? And I did. And honestly, I'm having such a good time. <laughs> the first book in the series is called Throne in the Dark by, I believe it's A.K. Caggiano. I could be pronouncing that wrong. And if I am, I'm so sorry. But basically this is like a fantasy romance situation series on Kindle Unlimited. I believe it is a trilogy maybe. And from watching Carrie's video, she described it as ridiculous and it gives Despicable Me vibes. And honestly, this book really does give Despicable Me vibes because the main character that we're following, his name is Damien, and he is the son of a demon. And he has spent this whole book just trying to convince us that like he is evil, like he is the worst possible person. His life goal is to spill the blood of his enemies, but like, absolutely not. He is totally not. But basically this book opens up on us learning that his father, who is the demon, has been trapped in this crystal for his whole life. And Damien's life mission has been to release his father from this crystal so that his father can like wreak havoc on the world, basically. And this book opens up with him kind of completing his life's work, even though he's only like 28, of creating this talisman that he's then going to somehow use to like go take down the person that put his father in the crystal. All right. So he's like going on this quest to go find this person and free his father. But along the way, he meets our other main character, Ama. I don't exactly know how to pronounce her name. It's spelled A-M-M-A. -A. I would probably go with like Ama if I was gonna take a guess. But through some turns of events, he ends up kind of forcing her to go on this quest with him because he now needs her to complete his, you know, lifelong mission of freeing his father. And their dynamic is so funny. It is very much enemies to lovers. Like I cannot wait to see when the enemies to lovers-ness starts happening. Because right now I'm only like 40% of the way into the book. So like groundwork is being laid, but obviously nothing has happened yet. But I'm so excited to see how that is going to continue to develop. And we also don't really know much about Ama. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to call her Ama because she's kind of on her own quest, which we don't really know much about. And we're kind of getting like, little bits of information about who she is, but we still don't really know. And I'm excited to learn more about that as well. Right now they're kind of just traveling. And to be honest, when a traveling book, like a traveling fantasy kind of book is done well, I eat it up. So this has been so fun so far. The dialogue is so funny. And if you're in the mood for a ridiculous and really fun fantasy romance book, I would Okay, I don't want to say I highly recommend yet because I'm only like 40% of the way into it, but I've been having such a good time and I've been reading it every like free moment I get. So very excited to continue on with that. Also very excited that it is a three book series. So I have a lot of content to get through and I just cannot wait to see how it progresses. So um, I feel like I just spent a lot of time talking about that book, but I'm so excited about it. So there is um, the book that I'm currently reading. But before I let you go, I'm gonna go through the five books that I actually completed in this vlog. So first I read 10,000 Stitches by Olivia Atwater. Honestly, it seems like an eternity ago that I read this book, but this is so fun. I had such a good time and I cannot wait to pick up Long Shadow, 
which is the next book in this series. Oh, it's only like three days until the first book in the Victorian fairy tale series comes out and you know I cannot wait. <laughs> then I read Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I have very mixed thoughts on this, but I am excited to continue the series. Nonetheless, I have Days of Blood and Starlight. I think this is the second one ready to go, so I cannot wait. Well, get back. There we go. <laughs> so I cannot wait to continue and see where the series ends up. Then I read God Killer. I didn't like this book. <laughs> me and Cass had our live show for this this morning and a lot of people didn't like it, which makes me feel better. But then to kind of save the day, I read Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Still had such a good time, such a good romance. Yeah, it's just so fun. Like the plot itself is fine, but like I'm really here for the romance. 10 out of 10. And then finally, I also read Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. Again, this one was so fun. I feel like even though there are some books in this video that I wasn't like super jazzed about, I still read so many good books. Like these three and Throne in the Dark, I'm loving so are loving slash loved so i feel like it was a very successful video and i believe i ended up reading around 1700 pages which is a lot of pages so i think with that with all that being said it is officially the end of the video. I fear this has been a long one. I hope it hasn't been too long. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, I would love to know down below. Have you read any of these books? We have a lot to talk about here. So I'm gonna assume you've maybe read at least one. Or if you haven't, literally just tell me maybe what you're reading right now, what you're up to. Do you have any fun plans coming up? Literally, I'm all ears for anything you want to tell me. I love chatting with you guys. Also, thank you so much to everybody over on my Patreon. If you ever want more content from me, that is always linked down in the description. I will have my full spoiler vlog for Powerless up, I think tomorrow as I'm filming this. So like it will be up. If you want to check that out or in December, we are reading The Starless Sea. So I will have a little spoiler filled buddy read up for that at the end of December. So exciting stuff going on but with that i'm going to now let you guys go so again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video